Here's how to install a Lexus ES300 electroluminescent instrument cluster in a Toyota Camry. Here are the stock gauges in the Camry and here are the ES300 gauges installed in the Camry. This mod will work with any first generation Toyota Solara or fourth generation Toyota Camry from 97 to 01 with the instrument cluster taken from the Lexus ES300 from 97 to 2001. You're going to need a Lexus ES300 instrument cluster with the pigtail wiring harness and also the wiring diagram for the Lexus and the Camry. In my case I'm using the Solara but it's very similar. All of the gauges and lights work in the ES300 cluster with the only exception being the oil light which is a feature not available in the Camry the rail stat to control the brightness and the missing security light. Also the odometer will read what the old car read that the cluster came out of which in my case is about 620,000 kilometers. To remove the old instrument cluster we're going to come under here and remove two screws, one there and one over there and then this trim piece here can then be removed. good idea to take a picture of your gauges in idle just to make sure everything is working when you compare it to the new gauges. Remove four more screws, two at the top and then two on the bottom. And Then we can pull out the instrument cluster. Get the instrument cluster out, now we can pull on the tabs at the back and squeeze and pull these connectors out. Good idea to write down the odometer reading on the old and the new odometer. Here's the instrument cluster from my Solara. And here's the back. You can see there's three connections. And it looks pretty simple. And here is the cluster from a 1998 Lexus ES330 that I pulled from the junkyard. So you can see the mounting points are exactly the same. It's electroluminescent. On the back, we have four connectors. And I've also pulled the wiring harness, stripped, of it, stripped them and label them according to my wiring diagram. More on this in the appendix. Here I have the wiring diagram for the Lexus and the wiring diagram for the Solara. So what I've done is gone through each item inside of the instrument cluster and changed the pinouts according to the Solara wiring diagram. So for example the speedometer here I match the input from the ECU and then the output to the vehicle speed sensor to the one from the Solara and then I can write down all of my pinouts for each light and gauge and rewire them in the car. Just testing my connections here and wiring up the ES300 wiring harness to the Solara's wiring harness by poking the wires into the connectors just to test it out. So here I've got everything all wired up for testing I've just wired it to the stock wiring harness without modifying anything. Got it all taped up and then I'll just give it a quick test, see if it works. So it looks like the gauges are lighting up, so we can go ahead and wire it up permanently now. Here's the wiring harness from the Solara. What I'm going to do is rearrange this head to fit the Lexus ES330 gauge cluster. So I'm going to use a screwdriver and remove these contacts here, like this, and then rearrange them across all three connectors to fit the Lexus cluster. Here's the wiring connector and to rewire this we have to open it up by removing this top piece here, and then remove this top piece here, just use a screwdriver, wedge it in, open it up, and then to depin these connections, you use a flat screwdriver. Go in here and press down, and it comes out. And when you're done, you'll be left with something like this. And you can take the wires and plug them into any slot, like that. So now we've got all the wires removed from the housings. I'm going to swap that over according to the wiring diagram to these headers and the Lexus cluster also has this additional 
header that I have to swap to. In some cases you'll have to extend the wiring to the head going to the cluster. So if this is coming from the car, you just strip the wire, fold it around the connector, and then use a piece of tape to insulate the connection. Make sure it's secure. So this is the jumbled mess that you're left with after you rewire the harness to fit the ES300 gauge cluster. Uh, in some cases here I had to extend the wires so that these connectors can reach the other side of the gauge cluster. And there of course are some wires that are not connected like the security light and also the rail stat. We need to make sure that all of these warning bulbs here work. To remove them, simply twist them, pull them out, and then you can pull off the wedge bulb. I'm replacing mine with these wedge style LED bulbs, so all you have to do is wedge it in and then insert it and test it out. If it doesn't work, reverse the polarity and then try again. And carefully put back the instrument cluster inside of the dash, making sure no wires pinch. Just wiggle it in. Replace this trim piece here. And there's two more screws to replace there. Everything's all wired up and closed. I'm going to start it up. So here's the boring part where you have to go through the wiring diagram for the Solara and compare it to the one on the Lexus to get the pinouts. Now the Camry ones will be very similar and you'll also find that the connector colors in the car will be very similar to the ones on the cluster. Connectors C7, C8, C9 and C10 on the Lexus cluster refer to A, B, C and D in this diagram and also connectors C11, C12 and C13 refer to A, B and C in this diagram here. When comparing connectors on the wiring diagram you have to refer to the pinouts which are the pinouts for these plugs that plug into the back of the instrument cluster. So on the left there are four connectors for the Lexus ES300 instrument cluster and they're all labeled with their pins and on the right the Solara has one, two, three connectors. These are the connectors that will have to be rewired in order for the instrument cluster to work. One feature that we'll miss from the ES300 cluster is the security light so we're not going to connect that on the car's wiring harness. A feature that the Camry doesn't have is the oil pressure light which tells you that your oil pressure is low. The light will come on after a delay so you won't see it right away so all we're going to do is remove the bulb for this on the instrument cluster and we won't have to worry about it. The rail stat in the Solara works a lot like a potentiometer to dim the lights. However, the rail stat in the Lexus, because it is electroluminescent, is significantly different. Here's the wiring diagram for the rail stat, which is six pins, whereas the Solara is only three pins. So for now, we're just going to leave these two wires disconnected from the rail stat in the Lexus instrument cluster and let it run at full brightness. Page one of the Lexus schematic goes through your odometer, speedometer, fuel light, fuel gauge, tachometer, your door light, and the oil light. Page two of the schematic goes through the water temperature gauge, your engine light, the cruise control light, the seat belt light, the ABS light, the traction control light, and your stability control light, your alternator charge light, the airbag light, overdrive, and also your turn signal light. Page 3 goes through your rear light indicator bulb, your brake light, your bulb check relay, and also the engine oil pressure light, which we're not going to connect because the Camry doesn't have that feature, the high beam indicator, your headlight indicator, uh, the taillight indicator in the case of US cars, and your low washer level light. Finally, on page 5, we go through the transmission indicator lights, park, reverse, neutral, drive, 2 and L, and also the uh, connections to the rail stat, uh, which we're going to leave disconnected.